talk to you about Early Days, Indigenous Art at the Big Michael, which is a large exhibition that we have on view from now until June. And it brings together all the wonderful things that the very best of our holdings of Indigenous art, which were very much the passion of our founder, Robert McMichael and his wife, Sydney, collected Indigenous art starting in the late 1950s when Robert McMichael had a very significant encounter with the artist Bill Reed from British Columbia, who was of course a master of Northwest Coast carving and revived those traditions and they became friends and uh, McMichaels got very, very invested in the art of the Northwest Coast. They also were very interested in the works of Norval Morisot and the Woodland School in Ontario. So really the um, art of indigenous people was always conceived by the, our original founders as integral to the story of Canada. And now that seems so obvious, it doesn't need saying, but in those days it was actually um, quite a prescient gesture. I think we were the first museum in Canada to show settler art in indigenous art side by side in our galleries. And of course we've continued, various curators over the course of the years have continued to push the envelope in how we incorporate Indigenous voice into the holdings of the McMichael. In fact, it became a point of contention at one, at one point in our history because Robert Michael's view of Indigenous art was actually quite conservative in a way. He liked the old things. He liked the traditional masks and carvings. He wasn't so interested in overtly political art, but the curators at the McMichael were. And so there were many important arguments and discussions that took place around what is Indigenous art and what is Canadian art at the McMichael. And we really relish the opportunity to bring these objects together to tell both the story of Indigenous art in Canada, but also of our own institution's evolution in terms of our thinking about Indigenous art. We're starting the exhibition with a display of works by Dana Claxton, who you see here on the left, and um, Kent Mugman, who of course has recently had a major commission at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York and who is, I describe as being Canada's trickster in chief. I think he certainly deserves that mantle. This work, Wedding at Sodom, is one of his newer works and it's a, a wonderful image uh, and painting for us to have at the McMichael because it really celebrates this moment of mutual curiosity um, between settlers and indigenous people in the historic rendezvous that used to take place in the West where trappers and traders and indigenous people and missionaries and merchants would all get together for these multi-week long uh, bacchanals and certainly um, uh, Kent reimagines this with a kind of two-spirited twist to it but the painting coming into our collection uh, really um, harkens back to a really important moment in 2004 when Kent Monkman made his first performance as Miss Chief, on horseback no less, on our grounds at the McMichael. So we're very proud of this part of our history. Uh, this is where it all started and we continue to stay close to Kent and his evolving work uh, as the years go by. The second gallery in this display really goes back to the roots of Robert McMichael's engagement with Indigenous art, which is Morisot and the Woodland School. It also includes a, a very beautiful sculpture by Shelley Nero, which uh, resonates with a, a heart-shaped stone, which she places beside a poem by Daniel David Moses, a, a fellow member of Six Nations Reserve in Brantford who recently passed away. It's particularly sweet to have Moses' uh, beautiful poem in our display right now as well to remember him. We also have a new set of, uh, new to us, set of ceremonial regalia um, from the Great Lakes region, which came to us in 2013 from a collector in Vancouver, uh, most likely a, gift, a set of gift regalia that was in all probability given to a British officer sometime in the late 1770s. The objective in the long term is to create a major publication that will probably take us several years to do so, in which we gather all of this scholarship and all these multiple voices to help us understand better the legacies that we hold. We also have a beautiful gallery full of Inuit original drawings by such artists as Shuvanayashuna, Tim Pitsulak, Pudlo Pudlat, Siasi Keneally, and others, 
that bring us up to date with a new rising phenomenon in Inuit art, which is the unique drawing. Historically, drawings were made uh, as part of the process of moving towards uh, printmaking, but in the past several decades, they have come to be a, an end in themselves, often moving in scale to be very large, uh, sometimes even magisterial. And we have a couple of examples of that in this show that, that we're delighted to share with you. Finally, the show ends up with Carl Beam, who uh, a late and very great Anishinaabe artist from Manitoulin Island, whose really sophisticated works marry a deep search in the archives for the history of indigenous people in North America and a thinking through the legacies of 19th century photography, of, um, of eth ethnology more generally, of American pop art, the use of photography in works of art, um, the traditions of painting and abstraction. Uh, Carl Beam was one of the giants of um, Indigenous art in Canada, and we were lucky enough to acquire major works by Carl Beam in the 1980s and 90s, and we continue to seek additional holdings of Carl Beam's work to become, you know, really a repository for scholarship uh, on his incredible legacy. So those are just some of the wonderful things that you will find in this exhibition at the McMichael Early Days. And we called the show Early Days for several reasons. One is the early days of humans on this continent. Uh, there are, of course, no settler people here. And the legacies that are in this show um, are continuation of very, very uh, long-standing millennial cultural traditions of thought that are still going on today. But, you know, those were the early days before we came. It's also the early days for our institution. We're just over 50 years old. And so this is a kind of a catch up on where we are in terms of our own institutional early days and what our sort of aspirations for the future are. Um, it's also, I'd have to say, early days in terms of the relationship between settlers and indigenous peoples. And as we all know, it has been a very painful history of contact between our cultures. But I think this exhibition with all its radiance and its joy and its beauty and its, and its power invites us to contemplate a way in which we could be better together and Indigenous people could be, you know, more uh, equitably served in Canadian society and in which we can truly share power and share our perspectives together. So I, I feel the show is very celebratory. It has a brand new feel and we're delighted to be able to share it with the public at the McMichael.